on this episode of Please Be Advised. Greg, Cynthia, and Rebecca will discuss the Stop Sexual Harassment in New York City Act and what that means for you and your business in the Me Too era. Welcome to Please Be Advised. This week we'll be discussing the Stop Sexual Harassment in New York City Act, signed into law on May 9, 2018 by New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio. The law is a package of bills aimed at addressing and preventing sexual harassment in the workplace. The signing of the act triggered the countdown to the effective dates of various provisions. Let's take a look at each provision and what they mean. Effective starting May 9, 2018. The New York City Human Rights Law is amended to permit claims of gender-based harassment by all employees, regardless of the size of the employer. Previously, the anti-discrimination provisions of the law applied only to employers with four or more employees. In addition, the statute of limitations for filing complaints with the New York City Commission on Human Rights of claims of gender-based harassment under the law is extended from one year to three years after the alleged harassing conduct occurred. So they're extending the statute of limitations from one to three. How do you feel about that? Um, I mean, it's interesting because the reason we have statutes of limitations in the first place is one, to promote people, you know, to be proactive in enforcing their rights and not to sit on them, but also to preserve, you know, evidence and um, make sure that, you know, people's memories um, aren't stale and, you know, that the documents that you need are in place um, and you can find the people you need to substantiate claims. And also just to cut down on, you know, um, potential nebulous liabilities that hang over a company when um, you're trying to, you know, do major corporate transactions and you say, you know, what what's out there? What are the risks um, that I have to be aware of so that you have a, you know, more clear sense of what exposure you have? Um, and, you know, particularly in terms of making sure that the evidence is ripe and that people are around and documents are around. Um, you know, some people have annual document destruction policies and um, people leave and move. So extending it too long, I think, is dangerous. Um, but at the same time, I recognize that for a lot of people dealing with it emotionally and processing it and, you know, also maybe feeling that they're not ready until they're comfortable that they have a, another employment job lined up but somewhere else where they can go, um, that they're willing to address what happened. Um, and that can take some time. So, um, you know, exactly where the right balance is, I'm not sure. Three years kind of feels like it could be a long time. You know, something happened three years ago. Um, you know, your coworkers moved on, they've gotten rid of the documents, but, you know, within one year is a pretty short um, time frame. Um, three's not that bad. I, you know, I think it's probably a good step. Um, I, I still think people should be encouraged to address these things as soon as possible. So this changes the situation for all New York City employees, employers now because it used to be four employees was the standard, correct? So now all New York City employers are going to be held to this standard and, and, and that changes a lot of their practices such as documentation retention, correct? As you were just saying. True. Yeah. Yeah, you'll have to keep everything for longer than three years regardless. Just right. In case so so what, what's the danger of, of not keeping documentation for three years now? Um, I mean, if you don't have, um, you know, records of compliance um, for these periods, it's just going to be that much harder for you to prove your point. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, let's say a suit comes up and someone says, I reported this. And you say, well, our policy is that we um, all reports are documented. Um, so if you had reported it, we would have had a record. We don't have a record. You clearly didn't report it. You're wrong. And they would say, no, you destroyed all your records. You right. know, you I did report it, and you did nothing about it. So you know, it, it could potentially put you in a weaker spot. So a small employer of, let's say, an an employer has two employees. They're going to have to change their whole document retention policies, and, and even if they even have policies, yeah, they may have to put policies were. in place. Put them in place, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, and it just essentially, there were always laws in place on a federal level and from other angles that you can come at, you know, if there's a harassment issue um, and, you know, what the damage is that come from that. But, um, and I'd be interested to read the full bill um, to see if it specifies any statutory damages in addition to actual damages. 
um, but by just increasing the potential, this is just one more layer of liability that comes with sexual harassment. So it's one more push to really take it seriously. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, for everyone, even the smallest of employers, you have some significant exposure here. Yeah. So you need to be more proactive um, in making sure that, you know, you stop these claims before they happen. Um, and I think that that is a good step because, like we said, there's no justification that I can think of. You know, nobody would say that harassment is acceptable when you have one employee. <laughs> um, right. So, and I don't think that the costs involved with um, the balance of the costs involved with putting in steps to prevent it versus the potential liability if something goes bad, that balance still favors more upfront, even for one employee, even for two employees. You know right. that balance you can you can get sued by one. So, um, well, I think one of the big big things that we don't mention is that many times people are, are embarrassed to bring these things up. So, if it happens, if they leave a company, they may be embarrassed, and, and one year is not enough time for them to get over. You know some of their own hangups to to say something and and, and make sure somebody's held liable uh, is three years a good time i mean rebecca what do you think about three i mean years? i think three years is definitely better than one i think yeah. it's actually a pretty good spot as far as um uh, limits are concerned i think you know five to seven to ten is way too much um but three seems like a good fit for it and you know people you know, you never know what somebody's financial situations are. And, you know, if they're sticking in that job because they need that job and they can't risk getting fired and having to go through an expensive lawsuit, you know, with no uh, with no income, you know, people have a lot of different stories. And I think it extends the amount of people that can can come forward with with any sexual harassment that they find in the workplace, regardless of, of when it is like that. I think it's a good thing overall. All right, so we think it's a good thing. Let's go on to the next provision. So the second provision that was enacted was um, effective as of July 8th, 2018, so this summer. Um, and this one requires that city contractors will be required to include their practices, policies, and procedures relating to preventing and addressing sexual harassment as part of an existing report required for certain contracts pursuant to the city charter and corresponding rules. Um, yeah, so this one, so were city contractors not required previously? They didn't have any provisions against them uh, previous to July 8th, 2018? No, so, um, city contractors, um, you know, are, are private businesses that contract with the government yeah. and they're subject to all the same laws as any other, but they often have additional, um, sometimes particularly onerous requirements that if they're going to do business with the government, they have to um, represent a warrant or certify that they have certain practices and policies in place. And these are all over the board. Sometimes, like, if you're going to do it, you have to have a formal policy that says no driving and texting and all your employees have to sign that. Like, you know, they, they run the gamut. You know, you have to have just a it basically tells you what has to be in your employment yeah. book. So they just added and said basically they also have to have a, um, you know, a sexual harassment um, policy in their in their in their um, you know collection of policies. And I'm not entirely sure exactly what the city currently reports on a federal level. You have these. Um, it's a government website that you have to go in and you have to certify compliance with various federal regulations on the city level I imagine it's a similar type of report that you go on and you check boxes indicating that you you know um, certify or represent a warrant that you comply with things so um, what know. I find interesting about the city is that many times they will have city employees and the rules will be different for them mm -hmm. so many of these rules that they're putting in place for private employers don't apply to city employers um, can I think of one off the top of my head? Not right now, but I know they. It does happen. Um, I just find that very interesting, and and I, I'm assuming it's because of of budget concerns and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I mean they're two totally different um, regulatory regimes mm -hmm. in terms of when you normally have legislators debating these bills, they say what's going to apply to public employees, what's going to apply to private employees, and what's going to apply to contractors. And so it, sometimes it could just be a question of, 
you know, who the individual people negotiating these things are and what different rules they come up with. Um, you know, sometimes there are different committees working on different things, but generally sometimes you get lower requirements on a public level on the argument, the same argument that you have for excluding small businesses um, is, is, you know, money concerns. Um, but I think when it comes to sexual harassment, I, that argument falls apart a lot because I just don't think it should be that expensive to comply. No. It's, and it's crazy that it, they just added this. Yeah. I mean, I, we'll get into it, I think, in a little bit when you talk about particular training programs Maybe there are costs involved with that, True. but the costs of having a policy and the costs of refraining from the behavior, um, you know, is something I think we all need to share as a society. And I don't think it's something that should be, you know, considered overly costly or expensive so or unnecessary. Yeah. In general. <laughs> so in terms of this provision, we think it's a good. I think it's yeah, hundred percent. Um, For most employers out there, it's not going to really affect them in yeah. terms unless you have a contract with the yeah. city. Um, so if you have a contract with the city, just know if you're your contracting time is with up. the city, you already ha- should have a fairly robust uh, regulatory compliance. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> whatever, whether person who has that job or mm-hmm. department, and you know that's a cost you're going to have to do, and it's something that you exchange for the privilege that's the the idea of getting right. the luc- and some of these contracts from the city are very lucrative mm-hmm. so um you know okay let's uh choice. let's check out provision three so this one um has not been enacted yet this is beginning september 6 2018 so right after labor day um employers will be required to conspicuously display an anti-sexual harassment rights and responsibilities poster and distribute an information sheet on sexual harassment to new hires both of which will be enacted and made known by the city commission so we got to put the posters up right we so buy that's, the posters and that's have them upcoming up so all employers should know about this yeah and this is a regulatory practice that is just like any of the other signs, minimum wage, stuff like that, now you're going to be required to put a sign up like that. I can't even imagine what those posters are actually going to look like, though. <laughs> I'm sure they'll be huge and, yeah, and right. white and, and okay. yeah. ugly yeah. and, and take Gotta up a lot up, of space. Uh, great marketing you know, opportunity for <laughs> all of the companies that sell those <laughs> yeah, right. things. Um, yeah, know, so be I, ready for a lot of yeah. mail. Put in your yeah. Amazon <laughs> orders. Can you buy those on Amazon? Maybe. You know. <laughs> there's, there will be a cost with updating mm-hmm. those, um, and, you know, I, there is a cost involved with... Um, well, I'm assuming that the city is going to be providing that to all employers, correct? As, like, a free version you can copy from their website or something like that? Well, they give us, from my understanding, they send everybody those posters to oh, they do? put up. Yes. So yeah. every year you get, or when they get updated, you get a new oh, poster. Oh, okay. So we'll just be getting those. Um, it's your responsibility to make sure they're in a place that your employees visible, will see, yeah. correct? But, um, so uh, my my under, I, I'm assuming it's going to be the same. You're going to get a poster. You're going to put it up, and you're going to make sure your employees know about it. Um, um, I mean that's a big thing as well. Uh, I think a lot of our employers, especially small employers, don't really pay you know attention pay attention to that, to that stuff. Uh, if you get an audit, that's the first thing they're looking for. Mm-hmm. They're going to find where you put mm-hmm. those signs. Make sure they're up. Make sure their employees know that's about it. it. They may even poll employees i mean also Um, and then when you know you have the if you have someone who's fired or terminated mm -hmm. or leaves or is disgruntled and they have any issue and they talk to an attorney it's just something they're going to tag on um you know we've seen that um you know oh i didn't get my wage and hour notice or i didn't get this notice or i couldn't see the poster and that's just an additional claim additional damages so don't even don't even um, make it an option so in terms of of not having that that poster up the, one of the things that can happen to you is you can get a fine from the city yeah um Just until you comply yeah. oh yeah. it does say that city commission will provide the um yes yeah. exactly cool so, so cool. i mean that's you know comes with the territory i don't think i don't really have an opinion one way or the other on that it's just this is another thing to have another poster compliance <laughs> poster that needs to go up yeah to basically inform your employees so. there's already probably a collection you just add them to the collection of other posters that you probably well already have. i mean <laughs> uh, they should be up <laughs> they, they should be up in a, in a place that maybe your break room or a place where your employees clock in mm-hmm. that's where they should be um 
Yeah. You know, it's just, uh, I have no opinion one way or the other, whether it's good or bad. It's just something that you have to do. I mean, I think when we finish running through all of them, we can get into whether we think these things will actually have the desired effect or whether it's more just paper pushing and mm -hmm. politics to look like you care. But, um, right. you know, I think like anything, it's, you know, whether you adhere to the spirit or, or the right. letter. Right. Um, if you really take a proactive stance to make sure that your employees understand these things and then understand that you take it seriously and that you are not just, you know, doing what you have to, but what you believe you should be doing. Well, I hope that's the idea behind these because being proactive is going to hopefully prevent these things from happening. Yeah. Um, it might Whether, be good for just have a reminder on the wall for people. Oh, absolutely. Just don't well, do that. <laughs> I mean, you as an employee, how many times have you looked at that poster? Which Honestly, poster? <laughs> it, Never. What about wage and, and you know, time Pregnancy, and leave and stuff right. like that? Um, I haven't. I also know my rights, so it mm -hmm. might be a f it might be f more effective for people that don't aren't as aware of their rights or, you know, someone that has might sexually harass somebody i don't know right. that might be more effective for them i haven't really looked at our posters personally as an employee it's really <laughs> a, a, a way for the government to to interject themselves into an employer's uh practices to make sure that their employees are, are aware of certain laws and protections they have and if your employer um, is telling you the wrong information like you have a, you have a resource right there staring at you with the correct information well that's saying. another topic if they're telling you the wrong information yeah or if they don't know the right information I'm or assuming whatever they're liable right right Cynthia, um, for negligence or, I mean, I you know the now we have affirmative laws that say you have to provide them with certain information. So, um, you know, that just ends it right there that you have to give them this information. I you know if you are telling them other things on the side, I mean, like Rebecca said, they can look at at, at that. Um, I mean, generally speaking, most employers are not um, tasked with you know, giving legal advice, so, or, or telling, outside of a law that says you have to have a post or you have to give a piece of paper, there's no obligation to be honest or truthful with someone about their rights, so that's why we have these laws. Right. And we do have them um, with regards to things like overtime pay, with things like, um, you know, medical leave, things like that, so... Um, like the specific story that comes to mind is I know a girl that moved to the city and she was from the south and she was used to a very low minimum wage and her employer underpaid her by basically half of what she was due for like six months because she didn't know what the minimum wage was. I doubt that employer had a poster up. Because she could have looked though. <laughs> yeah. She should have looked it up herself. But you know, for a lot of people, if their employer is like, I'm going to pay you $10 an hour, which is, you know, underpaid, then Yeah. It's well, right I mean, there for you. I think you have to realize that many employees are passive or uneducated. 100%. Or, you know, don't, or Feel older. Feel lucky to have a job in the first yeah, place. Yeah, they may be older and don't understand technology. Um, and as you said, they may be very happy to have a job. Um, there's yeah. a lot of reasons why they won't complain about it or look I mean, it up. But at least this is me. So this is, I mean, this aware. is adding to the topic, but do you think that having people be more aware of their rights will lead to increased enforcement? Because I still think that you have the, yeah, I know this is illegal, I know this is wrong, but I practically know that if I make a stance or I say something, you know, um, it, it's, opening a can, can of worms, you know, and it's like, I don't plan to ultimately sue, so now I'm just going to look like a, you know, and... Uh, that's well, true. that's why we have anti-retaliation laws, correct? Uh, just yeah. to help, I mean, to hopefully... Yeah, but even if somebody doesn't that. affirmatively retaliate, they're still, you know, depending on what industry you are, industry gossip, inter you know, and the fear, rightful or wrong, that if you say something, nobody's going to want to hire you in the future because, you know... And that's something with all of this extra stuff. I have some employers that say, you know, I can't officially say this, but I have a bias. I would prefer not to hire women because I don't want to invite this liability right. in the first place. Um, you know, I would guess that a lot of that behavior is starting to go away because people are becoming more vocal and coming out mm -hmm. and speaking about these issues and, and suing and making sure that other people know about it. Um, maybe 10, 15 years ago, people were very afraid and didn't want to do it um very recently just 
you think people are more willing to speak up because it's it, well absolutely know. I see it every day in in the news where there's um, protests and, and you know union rallies and stuff like that and I think overall you know we're working towards a society in a workplace where we don't need to have a lot of protests and a lot of rallies mm-hmm. and like everyone's protected and everyone works well together and it's sexual harassment is as big of an issue and it's not as much in the dark and I think that's what a lot of these things are working towards and I think a lot of them are good for that cause overall yeah when I think of the 80s I think of <laughs> a guy in a, in a shark suit um, sexually harassing his receptionist who's always a woman <laughs> and but it was okay it was okay and it was actually laughed about yeah. and, and everyone gave him high fives mm-hmm. and uh, yeah it's bad news the woman would not say anything and go home and cook dinner and get beat up by her normal. husband yeah what do you think about the um, you know in some particular industries that happen to be particularly male dominated you know and for example have, such as finance, <laughs> finance, or, finance yeah. okay. or you know i mean i some people say that stem you know is very male dominated mm-hmm. and you have the tech culture gen. so as an employer knowing your employees knowing that they're people knowing that you know it is what it is if you were like hey if i hire more women now um I'm increasing the probability regardless of the training I do regardless of you know the policies that I put in place you know particularly when I have some younger people and they're tw- you know and a bunch of guys and you know there's some some girls um, that something's gonna happen and now my liability for what ha- if something happens is going to be extremely well increased. I'll tell you you know and in, from a hiring perspective you know, um, do you think that that in any way should or may subconsciously affect in a hiring decision where you say, I'd rather not introduce the woman into that situation? I don't know about should, but speaking for myself, I know it definitely happens. Um, when you're in a culture where it's male dominated or uh, maybe a frat boy mentality, mentality, you are very cautious of bringing in um, something that will buck that or cause, you know, some sort of um, action down the line. So really, the answer to that is to change the culture uh, and to be proactive and to change that culture and make sure that... Do you think you can in the absolutely. sense of how can you? Is it? Do you think training really will do it's, it? It's, it's more about right training, having the proper leaders in place, changing perspectives, um, getting rid of people who don't fit in the new society that we have um i mean there are certain people that should not be in certain companies and and i would dare say that they need training themselves because they're living in a in a in a time that doesn't exist anymore um and it's very dangerous and 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 in reality it's it's hurtful for themselves too because they're not really understanding why they're getting this flack and this this backlash so it's really about training them, trying to train them. If that doesn't work, then you have to move on. Um, it's, it's a hard call for a lot of employers to move on from employees who they may like, that they may sympathize with, that they may uh, have had for years. It's something that you have but to I do. But I like that. I like that idea that, okay, so if this is not going to work, it shouldn't be that the quote-unquote victim is always the one that has to go that maybe you know they could turn out to be a rock star employee Mm -hmm. better than that one if they were given the right opportunity to flourish and maybe you need to make the choice i think it always begins with the leadership yeah so it i always say the buck stops at the top and and if if the people at the top are not on board with change or enacting that change then it's not going to happen um you can blame your employees as much as you like, but they follow your lead and they believe they follow exactly what you're going to show them. And what you put out is what they're going to 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 emulate, uh, you know, show everybody else what to do. Um, they have to know that you take it seriously that. and that their jobs are, you know, equally in jeopardy if they don't get in line. Yeah. Well, it's not. A, I, don't, I don't think you want to. I mean, you don't want to. Be I don't think you want to um, force the issue. Because forcing the issue makes people do things that they don't want to do. Um, if they don't want to do it and they're not on board with it, then they have to go. And you have to make the choice as a leader to to make those hard choices. You have to make them 
you, uh, you're never going to make people do what you want them to do. They have to either do it willingly or they can't be here. Um, that brings us to the training part yeah. of this. Yeah. So the last part of this um, of this provisions, uh, this doesn't begin until next year, so April 1st, 2019. So April Fool's Day, 2019. <laughs> um, employees, employers with 15 or more employees, and this is including interns now, will be required to conduct annual anti-sexual harassment training for all employees, including supervisory and managerial employees. So this training can be must be interactive, which doesn't mean um, a live... Uh, conducted training um, so it can be over you know the internet or um, one of those training programs um, and it must cover a number of topics including definitions and examples of sexual harassment education on bystander intervention and examples of how to bring complaints both internally and with the applicable federal state and city administrative agencies um, the city commission will be required to develop publicly available online sexual harassment training modules for employers to use oh that's good then this is an interesting um, provision for me because it yeah. includes interns. Yeah, that is super interesting. I mean, that makes sense, though. I mean, they're around. They so can be if, you're, harassed. if you're an employer who has 10 employees and you have seven interns, you're now... Yes. You're now held to this standard. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is a very interesting provision and changes the game for a lot of employers. I can see this one going down with it within a few years. Like the next kind of round that they, they maybe add to this or revise mm -hmm. these, I can easily just see this becoming all Well, it's employers. interesting because this is part of the one bill, but then there's also New York City employers in the budget bill right, have the state a, budget. Um, have to, regardless of size, have to do, it's a different sort of set, but they have to do a training as well, isn't that? true that's correct that so basically all employers at this point in New York City have to do some form of sexual harassment whether depending on your size it might have to comply with New York State you know specific protocols about what has to be in there versus the city versus and, and from my understanding it's you have to follow the provision that is highest level correct yes I mean if you're in the city you correct. have to meet the city one if it's more strict than the state correct um, so this is, you know, a very interesting provision for the state and then for the city. You're, if you're a city employer, you must comply. It's this no is very question. interesting because it's an actual affirmative change that mm -hmm. has to happen. And um, I feel like most employers are wholly unaware of it and um, are not in ready or in a position to comply at any time. And, and there's a cost with this. I mean, Yeah, what's the cost? What's the danger well, for employers? Oh. I, um, I'm not sure. So, I, I mean, it's another, again, I don't know if they're going to do audits or how they're going to, um, you know, d determine compliance. Um, but my guess is, like all other city law, they will do random audits mm -hmm. and surveys and things like that and find out. And then aside from that, of course, it adds to the potential claims. Now you have any employee who alleges um, harassment. And then one of the questions will be, did they have the harassment training? And they will say, no, boom, you've got a massive, now you have a violation there, right. one. Two, it adds so much credence to their claim. Well, clearly you don't take sexual harassment mm -hmm. seriously. You don't follow the law. I now believe even more so that this was a toxic environment. And, you know, it, it leads a lot of credence to their claim. And it makes it a lot more likely that a plaintiff attorney will take a claim by someone saying harassment because they now have already a you know, the scales have tipped in their favor already that they can win on something. So um, it's certainly something that... E yeah, employers should be aware of it because it, yeah, it's, a, it's a risky business not to comply. And the two sides of the training are um, the city commission is going to develop and provide the online sexual harassment training, but um, the employer has to supplement it with, the, with information about the employer's own internal compliant process to address sexual harassment claims. So just using the city commission's provided information isn't enough. You have to do your own as well. And yeah. it's annual, too, so it's yeah. every year. And something I've noticed, I mean, just from a, a broad survey, of our client, the smaller-based businesses are the ones having these issues more than the larger ones. Um, well, usually because they don't have a person assigned to deal with it. And it right, falls they don't have cracks. an HR person who's pushing these yeah. initiatives mm -hmm. or making it... Yeah. And you know, known that it's important. People are less, I think when you're like, I work for a big company and, I, you know, you have more this idea that this is work and it's sort of a, not about personal relationships, mm -hmm. it's about, 
you know, feeling of being a cog in a wheel, feeling a job and going home and you have these smaller companies, sometimes the lines between friends and Mm -hmm. colleagues and all that is a little bit more blurred. And of course you spend more time with a more concentrated group of people. So, you know, it's a, you know, you're more likely to go on business trips with the same person or something like that. It's more ripe for um, things to happen. So I think that, you know, I think a lot of the larger businesses already have these things in place because mm-hmm. when you have the money to oh, do... Oh, they so, will. Yeah. <laughs> but when you have the money, you know, because the threat of these types of claims was always out there. And if you right. had the money to do it and you had lawyers on staff or you had a sophisticated HR, they've been telling you to do this for a long time. But I think it's the smaller companies that didn't have robust HR comp- you know, departments or in-house counsel or even outhouse. <laughs> so in terms of smaller companies and mid-sized companies, what are some best practices that they should follow just to make sure that they're compliant, one, and two, that they're in helping with the spirit of this movement and, and mm-hmm. making sure that their employees are protected? I mean, they have, I, you know, they should have review all of the guidance and training um, that's online. Um, and I also have no doubt that if you Google around and now look for companies trying, you know, that have free information about, you know, what constitutes sexual harassment and best practices and, you know, really learn and educate themselves um, about it. And then they're going to have to take the time, I think, to communicate to their employees that they take these things seriously and that, you know, they're not going to stand for it. And then, of course, they have to, I mean, all companies, even if you have one employee, you should have some form of handbook. Yeah, that's if- an interesting uh, statement there because employee an employer or solo with one or two employees is going to have to get on the ball here and yep. make and sure start. that this one employee is following these compliance rules because they're not going to have anyone else to do it. They may, I mean, the best choice there may be the outsource because um, trying to do it yourself may not be viable. Yeah. Um, yeah. And keeping up to date with everything isn't always easy to oh, do absolutely. either. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, outsourcing is always a good option as well. I mean, that part, you know, I know it's a budget thing, but I'm sorry. I mean, I, there should be more of a public, um, you know, marketing campaign dissemination to make people aware of these laws. Um, I mean, I know that, you know, when people are running for office, um, they'll probably tout their accomplishments in this regard. So maybe the public will benefit from that. But you know um well best practice is to check the the new york city um websites to make sure that you're being compliant with a lot of these rules um, it's a responsibility to be an employer of one person it's a it's a responsibility um or just in general it's you know you have to you're responsible for your employees yeah yeah, as as soon as you have one can't do that be zero yeah yeah, as soon as you have one employee you're no longer a solo you're an employer And you're, you know, you have a responsibility to that employee. Yeah, you're responsible for that workplace as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, but question, do we think this is going to going to be effective, these training videos and training, in, interactive training There are a lot modules. of people who are not going to take it seriously, who right. are going to adhere to just the letter of the law. And Until they get like, sued. Exactly. Right. Um, you know, um, well, uh, you know, and that's what's interesting. I mean, having some... Um, known some businesses that have been sued for these issues. I mean, their some of the their reactions have been, forget it. I don't want an assistant. I don't want an employee. I just do it my own. Which is, of course, the negative. Right. Um, it's it's the downside. complete negative reaction yeah. to something that doesn't have to be negative. Yeah, but I think a better. You know, we also have some who say. I get it now, and like the, I just made the biggest mistake that I ever made, and I'll never make that mistake again. Um, you know, I hate that I had to learn the hard way, but I can tell you the costs that they've paid out in dealing with these issues, as opposed to you know, preventative care ahead of time, <laughs> um, is not even you know, remote. I mean, it's a whole different zeros of ballparks. But. I think it's amazing that as a society we've come to this point where we have to regulate something that I, for myself, would think it's common sense and something that you should not do. Well, a lot of, I mean, it's funny because, you know, as society changes and as laws change, I mean, a lot of things have to become illegal too. Like, you know, men used to be able to beat their wives and that was <laughs> right. super legal. So it's like, 
at a certain point, people were doing things that were That's kind of okay. Yeah. It's not legal anymore. <laughs> yeah. But uh, at least I hope slaves, not. You, know? you can't own yeah, slave okay. people. Like, there's a lot of things you can't do. And, you know, as... And, uh, you know, can you still is, hit your children? I don't... Yeah. Actually, I, I think, think you I can. can. You can't slay your children. I think well, you can. You just can't use a switch. fact check that one. Can yeah. you switch it? I think a spanking, you know... Spanking is allowed But, like, you know, there's a lot of... We can talk about that another time. But, you know, there's... We're in, you know, we're having growing pains as a society, and uh, ultimately, I think this is a good push from the government to, you know, regulate things and, uh, you know, put everyone in a better mindset about sexual harassment in the way that. I mean, it involved. really actually hasn't been that long when we think about it that um, women have been, you know, a significant contributor to the workforce. I mean, yeah. when you you're Overall. talking about one generation, mm-hmm. really, I mean, most people's parents. Um, it hasn't even been a hundred years yet. Yeah, yeah. So no. You know, um, and in some industries, it's still, you know, hasn't really happened in some, Mm -hmm. you know, they're very um, women dominated. Well, think about minorities and and when slavery ended. I mean, we're still struggling to not be racist. And, 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 you know, yeah, I mean, we still have a long way to go. Absolutely. So um, that's good progress. Don't listen to Kanye. Um, Yeah. Racism. <laughs> racism yeah. was not a choice. Uh, oh no, slavery, slavery was slavery not a choice. choice. Sorry, racism. <laughs> racism is a choice. Is a choice. Uh, <laughs> um, that's a whole other topic for different day. <laughs> yeah, right. But um, I mean, the only thing that I always fear with this is whenever you try to move forward, you know, you take one step forward, you get backlash. You go two steps right. back, where there are certainly people who are going to resist change, and they're going. Well, who's who? Who do you think is resisting this type of change? I think that there are many employers who are groaning about additional costs and paperwork and they think it's unnecessary and they think that it's, you know, just government interference in their business that's Mm -hmm. unnecessary. Um, I mean, and you have people who take the whole, generally, I'm anti-regulation, I'm anti, you know, people are going to do what they're going to do. They're going to be who they're going to be. You can't regulate ethics. Taking an entire day away from my company and working and making money and spending it talking about our feelings, you know, what country, <laughs> that's how they're going to see I it. Mean, what country What do you are, think, Rebecca? You know, Same thing? And, and no, I mean, I think that's going to be a lot of the pushback from employers. And I, I think Cynthia's right in, in the sense that a lot of employers don't see the problem with this because a lot of them haven't been sued and haven't had to deal with these issues later on. So the preventative care is really the your safest bet. As much as the cost, I mean, the the chances of, of you know, just as history repeats itself and as we've seen, chances of getting sexually harassed in the workplace are pretty high still. So all employers should know that and take preventative care. Like, it's not, we're not out of the woods yet. Yeah, I think that we are already into, or enough of a politically, you know, that nobody's going to have the, the gall to come out and say, um, you know, sexual harassment is okay. Everybody's going to say <laughs> it's not, it's not okay. Um, and and let's let's that, be clear that like men also get sexually harassed. Yes, 100%. Um, yep. That is an unspoken thing that happens in, in... Yeah, and I think even harder for them to speak Absolutely. up about it. Um, and we still have a lot of toxic, as much as we talk about, you know, it goes both ways, negative attitudes towards what women's role should be similarly towards men and, you know, um, sort of burdens we put on them in terms of being macho and being, you know, what it means to be a quote unquote man and all of that. So it's, it's redefining the rules on both sides. Um, but, um, you know, I think that there are some people who would also just say, um, you know, some of this is human nature, mm-hmm. and it's not something that you can change by regulation um, or by, you know, you can't change the way, you know, this is men and women and goes back years. That's an interesting discussion that I, you know, I don't know that any of us have the answer to, um, but I certainly think it's a little bit of a cop-out not to try. So in, in closing, we think that businesses should follow these regulations clearly and if you're a small size um, employer maybe get some help yeah. getting these things done 
and take them seriously and you know really the training is big because that's an affirmative you know something you have Mm -hmm. to do um and it's it's not you know fine i just got a piece of paper and i handed it to you this is i have to actually take time and i'm interested to see the program how long is it is it an hour is it a half an hour is it that is an interesting question i don't think there's um a regulation on that yet or or guidance on that and who's going to lead it you know well in Supervisors, managers also have to participate. From yeah. my understanding, you so, may need an outside. Yeah, you may need it. Who who's going to lead this? Is it going to be the supervisor who doesn't believe in it, or is it an <laughs> outside source? Um, I mean, my recommendation would be get somebody who is trained in this clearly and and understands this stuff, versus trying to lead that by yourself. Is it going to be like a video that you show? We don't know yet. Could be. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, and I think, but I think overall, it'll you know, it's every, we're all just working towards a more healthy and less toxic work environment in the end for everybody, and that's a good thing. Yep. So yeah, I mean, I think, and no matter your stance on um, sort of the social or moral underpinnings from a pure pragmatic business, it's just a matter of protecting yourself from liability <laughs> that's very real, and spending the preventative costs up front as opposed to spending you know, significantly more later. Um, so. All right. So get out there, get some help. (laughs) Get your posters on the wall. Get your posters on the wall. (laughs) Figure out those regulations. Cool. Good luck.